All right, so there's a huge uh, storm coming, snowstorm coming um, in Wisconsin tomorrow and the next day. So we're gonna go pick up a Polaris Ranger with a plow. It's a Polaris Ranger 500. It's up for 4,500 bucks. I'm doing a little trade here. Um, so we're gonna see if we can trade this KFX and 2,500 cash for the uh, Polaris Ranger. Probably a bad trade on my end, but I don't really feel like putting that much cash towards a Polaris Ranger. It is four wheel drive, it does have a dump bucket, which is pretty nice, so we'll see when we get there. But I bought from this guy before, he's he's pretty nice, so. So yeah, here it is. Good enough for you? Yep. <laughs> All right. Wanna go look at the uh, Polaris? I won't film in your shop or anything. Oh. Some people get weird about that. No, I think it's cool what you do, man. Oh, That's thanks. Nice. We need more of you guys. Yeah, it's Here she is, fun. it's a beater. But it runs and pushes snow. So you said you plowed yesterday with it? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's just a little bit too big for me. I'd like a smaller four-wheeler, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this will be good for the land, I think. I put that fuse right here. I don't know. If you're okay. Gonna, you're probably gonna want to hook up that light with a relay. Okay. Then it won't kill the kill, battery. Kill the battery. Yeah. Definitely a beater. So <laughs> 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 uh. everything works on it. Should. All right. It was brand new. <laughs> what's brake release? Is it parking brake? Yeah, that's right. Where is it? I don't know. I don't. It doesn't feel like anything's working there. Well, what keeps it locked? <laughs> oh, right here, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And then you. That takes a little bit of getting to know your machine. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Never really had it parked on a hill, so didn't need the emergency brake. Yeah. Dump box. Oh. See one thing I didn't check is the tail work. All stuck. Oh yeah, the pins, it's close to coming, I can see. Is it? Yeah, you can see it pull through. Oh. It's like a couple. Just not, not, not coming all the way. I'm sure a little WD-40. Get it moving. Did you think that'd be enough? How oh, freaking... How much do you gotta yank that? It's a fro... It. Yeah, it's I a... know it's definitely fixable. Think maybe you gotta move something over? If I break it, can we take off another couple hundred bucks? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So 24 and the, the quad for it. All right. All right, we got the beast in the back here. She's a little rougher than I imagined. Um, 
So the guy took off a hundred bucks. I guess one of the CV axles is cut out of it. I found when I was there. So the left, I think it's the right side actually, CV axle was cut out. I wanted to have them take off more, but whatever. And then um, the lights don't work. So it definitely needs some work. We'll go over the whole machine when I get back home. But it does run and drive, and it has a plow and winch. So that is uh, the plus. So I ended up paying, I think, right around $3,700 or $3,600 for it, technically, because I traded the dirt bike that I paid $1,200 for, for the quad, which I traded, and I gave $2,400 cash. So 24 plus 12 is 36. So I paid 3,600 bucks for it, which I think that's a pretty good deal. I don't know. So we'll get back home and uh, test this thing out. All right, finally made it home here. Ugh. This thing's pretty big, way bigger than I expected. I've never owned one before, but someone's taking up the whole trailer here. Still registered, 2024, that's kind of nice. Nice plow on it, it's not too bad. Wish it was a little bit bigger. What brand is that? Oh, Polaris plow, wow. <laughs> Winch, ZXR2500, what brand is that? Badland. It's got LED lights on it. It's got the windshield. A little crack right here. A little duct tape. Gotta have a little duct tape on it. And then the seats in the in the back of the truck. I didn't want that to blow off. But I'll show you guys the CV axle. That's broken off. And it, everything. But nice dump bed. I think it's pretty cool. pretty good it's negative weather right now it's like negative 10 so still started in the cold after that long uh, trailer ride so doing pretty good considering <laughs> see if the lights work here just has the one LED right there and there's one in the back too. The light switch right here. There's a fuse that goes in here. But that does work.
really high too. That's nice. All right, we got the beast in the garage here. You can see how much of the garage it takes up. <laughs> Pretty big machine. Um, this thing does dump. Let's see, it's pretty cool. We can lift this up from the other side as well. And it's nice that this opens up because you can get to everything as well. I believe the air filter is right in here. Let's see if the mouse is going to pop out. I believe there's an air filter in there. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Must be one at the bottom, too. Something's stuck. That one's stuck in there. Okay. Air filter looks pretty good. Take it out all the way. It's pretty clean. Jeez, that's a huge air filter. Looks pretty decent though. No, oh, really? Yep. Wow. Yep. My wife has off of work. So, air filter looks pretty good. It's giant though. <laughs> it's a huge air filter. So, air filter checks out. Let's see this engine in here. Looks like it's pretty, pretty wide open to, to work on. Doesn't look too bad. So there's actually two links going down to the rear. You can see one right here and that goes through the frame. And there's another knuckle right there. And uh, this thing's supposed to have diff lock on it. But it looks like the diff lock is disconnected. You can see right here. This is supposed to be for diff lock. I don't know where it would be on here, if anyone knows. Let me know in the comments. Shine the light, we looked for it when I was there and we couldn't find where the diff lock would even go into, you know? Like where would it hook into? But this this cable is supposed to control diff lock and mock the diff. The only thing we could think of was that the differential was changed out at one point with a non-locking diff. You can see all the brakes in there. Gotta love the Polaris brakes. They're always crappy. <laughs> the hitch looks like it's seen better days. I don't know what's going on with like the, the melted metal here. Looks like they cut off the ball or something. I don't know. The pipe isn't all rusted out. There's a couple holes in it though. Right there, right there. I saw puffing smoke from those holes. So there are a couple exhaust leaks. Nothing too serious. You've got a little compartment right here that opens up. That's kind of nice. Store your extra spark plugs in there, stuff like that. Battery charger. Let's see what else you got in here. The all-wheel drive switch right there, light switch, key with electric start, choke, um, charger port. See, it's got high hours, 845 hours on it. But if you're plowing with it, you're probably going like five miles an hour. So that equates to what, 4,500 miles around. You've got the parking brake there. This is the diff lock, but you can see it doesn't do anything because that cable's not going to anything. I'll show you guys. I'll move that lever. Watch that cable. So you can see that the diff lock doesn't work. Um, but yeah, it's got seat belts for three passengers. So someone can sit in the middle right here and over there. 
Got a roof on it, and then you've got the windshield that's taped over with duct tape. It looks like it was two pieces that were split. And then this thing should fold up, I think. Actually, I don't know what that does. I think it's supposed to fold up or come out or something. <laughs> we're just gonna leave that like that before we break it. The LED lights do work on it. And then it's got the Badlands 2500 uh, winch. Looks brand new, actually. Looks really new. Looks nice in there. And then the Polaris plow. A couple dents, dings. It should have a flap going over it, which that would really help. And then this thing pivots. You can see each way. And it's pretty easy to pivot, which is nice. And that's mounted right to there. So pretty heavy duty mounts in there. Big pins, with cotter pins on them, holding that plow on. So it's pretty much like a quick attach plow. Um, just right out in the open like that. It's really nice. You got a cup holder, you got the winch controls right here. Big container for stuff. Steering wheel with the knob. And then when you start this thing up or turn the key on, you can see the neutral. And then reverse. Low and high. Looks like the highlight doesn't work. There's neutral. So pretty much everything works on this thing. Except the diff lock and the CV axle that's broken. And then we couldn't get this thing to open up. You can see it wants to, but it's just those pins aren't coming out enough to open it. So we're wondering if this thing needs some WD-40 on it. All right, that's a little bit easier. All right, that's working better. Just have to use some force. All right, let's see if that backlight works. Supposedly, if you put a fuse in there, that backlight will turn on. So here is the spot for the fuse for the backlight. Um, I'm guessing that the battery loses charge when you have a fuse in there. That's why they took it out. Shove that guy in there. Oh, and it turned on right away. <laughs> Those are nice and bright. Let's see if it turns off with that switch here. Yeah. So tail light back there does work. I'd like to get these working right here. So I'm kind of wondering why those aren't working. Maybe there's a fuse broken or something. Kind of looking here. And the, t and the headlights don't work either. So that's why I'm kind of thinking it must be a fuse. I have to get this container open to look at it. Let's check this out. Look at where the carb is on this thing. Right out in the open. 
That's so easy to clean out. Take that bolt off right there. Take these two off and you're, you're good to go. <laughs> That's so nice. The starter is right there. The spark plug is right here. Oh man, that's super easy to work on. Then the valves are right here. So that's really, really nice. Polaris actually did something right. They made it easy to work on. At least the engine part of it. The battery box has seen better days. This guy like made like a floating battery box for it. Really, really janky. But it's it's working, I guess. It's just bouncing around. <laughs> this battery cable is just completely out. <laughs> Look at that. No bolt holding those on. <laughs> on either one. So that's just like not even on there. That's great. <laughs> Everything else looks pretty decent. Alright, let me show you guys the CV axle here. I can get to it. I might have to turn the wheel this way so you guys can see. So you can see the CV axle is supposed to go right into there and right into that hub right there. That's actually part of the CV axle, missing the bearing. <laughs> so yeah, CV axle was just cut out of it, which is crazy. I don't know why you wouldn't just replace that. But it looks like the shaft was taken out. And part of the shaft is stuck into the differential as well. But yeah, interesting way to do that. So yeah, overall not a super bad machine. Um, once we get that CV axle fixed, we'll have both wheels turning in the front. So we'll have four wheel drive. Right now we've got three wheels going and it's just a little bit tough to plow. Um, but other than that, it's, it's, a, it's a nice machine. Starts right up, runs good, doesn't smoke. So, I mean, it's, it's not horrible. I think we're gonna do a quick oil change on it before the snow comes tomorrow. We're supposed to get like eight inches. There's already a snow day at school, so I'm guessing uh, we're gonna get quite a bit. But we got a Wix filter for it. Supposedly this is the right filter. And then, um, I think the filter's right. Where is it? The filter's right down there. So it's a little tough to get to, but it should be doable. Let's see, if the battery was out of it, I think I could get to it easier. That's where the clutch is right there, the belt. I'm not, I'm not sure what it, I'm not sure where the drain is on this thing. All right, I finally found the the oil tank here. So it's behind this weird that's that's why I couldn't find it. Behind this weird battery setup. It's right there. There's the cap. So that's for the oil canister down here. And then the drain bolt is right there for the oil canister. And the one for the engine. Let's go take a look at this. The one for the engine is kind of hard to get to actually. Let's check it out. I think it's that big one right there. You guys can see that in there. Maybe you can't. It's that one right there. The light shining on it. That big one. See that at the corner? Right, this one right there. I just want to see how much oil's in there. Let's get our dipstick back in. It's hard with this battery mount right here. It's the weirdest setup for a battery. Okay. Oh, we're overfilled with the oil. Yeah, a little bit overfilled. All right, we'll see if I can get this break free here. Oh, that was really loose. Why was that so loose? 
probably not a great sign. Hopefully it's not stripped out in there. Wasn't leaking from it, so. Oh geez. That's uh really shooting out. It's really black. <laughs> it's extremely black. Doesn't look like any uh metal chunks or anything yet. There's a lot in there though. I believe this thing takes two quarts. Here's the drain plug. A couple metal shavings on the end of it, looks like. Oh, well, maybe not. It was just old oil deposits. Yeah, there's a lot of oil in there. Holy cow. I think this might be the blackest oil I've ever seen come out of an engine. That is pretty bad. Wow. That definitely needed to be changed. And I can see there's actually a Polaris oil filter in there. So <laughs> I'm guessing this has never had an oil change. All right, we're down here. We got the skid plate off. We got a flashlight on here. All right, we got the skid plate off. You can see it laying right here. I'm extremely surprised and happy that all the bolts came off on the skid plate. So now we're not gonna get oil everywhere. Let me take out the filter. All right, here's the old filter. You can see it says Polaris on it, so. I'm guessing the oil was never changed. I had to, uh, Punch a hole through it with a screwdriver to uh, torque it off because the wrench I had, it was stripping it. And it finally came, so now here's the new one. Looks the same thing. Just gonna lube up that seal right there and then throw that on there. All right, we pre-lubed the filter. You can see the oil in there. And then put some oil on the seal. We'll spin that on. And uh, that'll be done. All right, coming over to the right side of the machine here. Now that we got the filter replaced here, we're coming down to get the engine drain bolt out. All right. Let's see, we got the skid plate off. So that helps. So the bolt is right. Where is it? Right there. You can see it's draining in there. All right, the fill area is right here. I'm gonna use two quarts of oil. This 10W40, I'm gonna pour that in. Just that oil change alone costs, let's see here, about oh, 40 bucks. So. New filter and two quarts of oil. All right, we're gonna quick start it up. Are we in neutral? Need to have your foot, foot on the brake, I think, to start it. Let's see. Let that run for a little bit, get that oil circulating. All right, so the full mark is right here. Low mark is right here, normal is in this range. We're just right about here when I check it. So we're right at the low mark, we're gonna add a little bit more. Now we're pretty much right in the middle, between the low and the high. 
might add a tiny bit more. So we added about 10 ounces. I think 11 ounces is gonna be the ticket. All right, engine oil is changed. Let's change out the differential. So it looks like this is the fill cap right there. So that's what you fill it up to. And the drain is right underneath it. Pretty easy to find here. Right there. So let's get that drained out. Well, that's not good. There's literally nothing in there. There's drops coming from this. <gasps> that's crazy. All right, that tranny fluid coming out of there smells like straight up barf. It's disgusting. It's all over my hands now. That's exciting. <laughs> but it smells nasty. It's really, really brown too. We're really gonna kind of flush it out. Add a little bit more and just kind of try to flush out the bad stuff here. All right, to flush this thing out, I ended up putting some gasoline down here just to clean out all that old oil and that seemed to work pretty good. It was shooting out of the bottom. So we did that a couple times and flushed out all the old stuff, so. Looks like it's finally done draining. All right, we're gonna add some gear oil, trans and diff lube. Fill this all the way up. Until it comes up to the threads here. All right, we got the trans <laughs> fluid all the way up to the fill bolt threads up here. So that's all good. This is what was in there. Really gross, this is mixed with gas though. But you can see how brown and pukey colored that is. Really, really gross smelling. Smells exactly how that looks. But uh, let's work on the back diff and see if there's any fluid in there. I'm guessing it new. <laughs> All right, so the diff bolt drain plug is right there. So we're gonna unscrew that and see what comes out of there. And there's the fill plug right there on the side. Let's see what comes out of here. Oh, there's some in there. Looks pretty good, actually. It's a little bit white. Definitely have some in there. All right, it's the next morning. Let's go check out the snow. It's still snowing. Ooh, we got quite a bit. Oh yeah, probably like eight inches. You can see, I haven't plowed since yesterday, so. Maybe six, six to eight inches, probably. I think there's drifting snow too. So, it'll be a good test today with the Polaris Ranger. All right, so the rear differential is all filled up. It was a little bit low, so we topped that off. That's all good to go. I was working on the front differential over here, and um, the drain plug's right underneath it. There's a hole in the skid plate and then it's gonna be hard to see I'll have to get a flashlight here let's see if I can see the, uh, the fill plug this is where you fill it to I don't know if you guys can see that or not right it's got an Allen fitting I don't know if you guys can see that right there yeah, see that bolt right there so my seven millimeter fits in there. My uh, let's see what was it. My seven millimeter fits in there. But my eight millimeter won't. And also my five sixteenths. No, my nine thirty seconds fits in there. But eight millimeter won't. So I'm not sure if it's like rounded off in there or what. The eight millimeter Allen's not fitting all the way and it's really driving me crazy. I dropped it like 20 times in the skid plate and had to fish it out trying to get this in there and I just could not get it. So 
I hate to leave it, you know, without draining it, the, the front differential, but we might have to. The only other option is to like shave down some of this on the eight millimeter, but I want to wreck it because it's a whole kit. So I don't know what we're gonna do here. But um, in the meantime, I tried to get this cover off right here. We got this to pop up like that. And uh, we can check out the coolant and everything like that. So let's see if this is topped off. Gotta push it in, take it off. Yep, so coolant was topped off, which is great. That is a good sign. Typically when the coolant's topped off, that means that the head gasket's still fine and that the water pump seal is still good. Here is the brake fluid right here. That looks good. And then there's the coolant overflow. And then check this out. So the headlights are up here. And there's nothing going into them. So the bulbs are out of them. And they're supposed to connect. They're supposed to connect right in here. One's right here. And then one's right here. So the bulbs are completely out. So we'll have to get some replacement bulbs for those. In the rear, I took a look at these back here. Two screws pop these out. Then two bulbs are in here. And um, this one did not work over on this side. So I replaced the bulbs. And uh, now, check it out. Should be working. That one's working, that one's working, so. At least we've got tail lights now. <laughs> That's where the front CB axle should go. See that right there? And you can see in there, they actually left the CB axle partially in there. See that? So like the rod is still in there. <laughs> in the front diff. So we gotta pull that out somehow so we can get the new CV axle in there. Um, I don't know how we're supposed to do that. I think the best option would probably be to weld um, like a rod onto it and try to shove that out with like a slide hammer or something. Or what the guy was saying when I bought this thing from him, he said maybe drill and tap it and then thread a bolt in there and then use a slide hammer. That might be a better option. So either way, we're gonna have to do some work trying to get the thing out and uh, try to figure that out. But that's really the only main problem with this thing. And I think once we get that out, that CV axle will fit right in there perfectly. All right, we finally got the, uh, the fill plug out of the differential here. Let's see if there's any oil in there. Hard to tell. So it looks like something's draining out. Did I do all this work for nothing? <laughs> yeah, something's draining out. There's definitely some in there. All right, cool. All right, so I noticed all the frame has some rust on it. I want that to continue to rust, so we're gonna spray paint it with some Rust-Oleum paint. Just kinda go over the rusty spots. All right, she's looking pretty good. All right, let's go plow some snow.
All right, this is doing a great job. This is way faster than the, the four-wheeler. And it's nice because it's got that windshield in the front. It blocks you from all the wind. Like my face isn't even cold. But that was two passes right there. Half the driveway done. <laughs> That's way better. All right, so far, the Ranger's doing good for plowing. If we had the other wheel spinning, we'd be perfect. But uh, that makes it a little tricky going up the hill. Other than that, it's great. Another, one other thing I would change is having like a windshield wiper or something. Because it gets hard to see through. Let's see if you guys can see out of here. Probably can't. It's a little hard. I can barely see out of it. But I mean, it's it's falling great. Let's see if I can reverse all the way back up the hill. Highly doubt it. We'll see. Oh yeah. Not spinning yet. <laughs> we might just make it. Oh yeah, perfect. Sorry, sorry if it's hard to see for you guys. Hopefully it's not too hard. Yeah, you can see right there, I tried to back up and I couldn't because uh, we only have three wheel drive. You have to go really slow backing up, otherwise you'll, you'll slip. See like right now I'm slipping. You kind of have to get momentum going up the driveway. Wish you guys could see better here. I mean, that's, that's like the whole driveway cleared in four passes. That's not too bad. Thought the plow would have done a lot worse, but it's actually doing pretty good. You can put it in high or uh, low and it plows no problem.
right there is the only problem. <laughs> Getting all I have a snowbank without uh, four wheel drive is a little, a little rough. But once we get that fixed, I think this thing is going to be a great plowing machine. Uh oh. Yeah, it's hard to see I have a helmet and through the windshield. Yeah, it's doing really good. kicked on. Hear the fan going. No leaking yet out of it. So that's good. Yeah, I really wish we had that four-wheel drive. Let's go dump this.
Well guys, that wraps up today's video on the Polaris Ranger 500. Um, this machine worked pretty well, and um, obviously it would work a lot better if the CV axle on the front was working, but that was cut out of it and missing when we bought it. So I've got one on order. It'll be here in a couple days. We'll replace that. This thing might replace my uh, four-wheeler for plowing. It's a lot easier, or a lot quicker, I should say. The four-wheeler is probably easier. This is probably quicker. But yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, ran perfect. Uh, brakes work good. Shifts smoothly. I really like the dump bed for, you know, the hard to get places for snow. You can just shovel it in there and dump it. That was really, really handy. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice machine actually for what I paid for it. So I'm pretty happy with it. But yeah, that's the video for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. More to come on this thing. And until next time.